Hey everybody, welcome back to the Razzball Fantasy Baseball Podcast. I am, of course, beat on, joined by the man you want to hear from, the fantasy master Lothario himself, Gray Albright. How you doing over there, Gray? Hey, what's going on, beat on? I am on. Uh, so, you want to hear my computer story? Sure. Let's let's hear. I want to hear what it is because you know. <laughs> yeah, you want to hear the okay? Because every week I have to uh, I have to reset up my uh, microphone and I have to reset up my background and and you're probably like, what's going on over there? Why why does it it doesn't change for me? Why does it change for Greg? So uh, here's a quick story about that. So I had a computer issue, um, MacBook Pro, uh, not not an ad, and uh, I had to bring my computer into um, the Apple store to get repaired. So I was like, hey, do you guys do um, loaners, you know, because uh, I'm not going to have a computer if I give you my computer. And they're like, no, we don't do loaners. I was like, oh, uh, so what do I do? And they're like, well, you can buy another computer. Uh, I was like, uh, for $1,800? <laughs> That's almost three full <laughs> gas tanks. <laughs> I, uh, I, so I said, uh, no, nah, I, I don't really want to just, uh, you know, throw out $1,800 on a computer. And they're like, I, I mean, you can return it if it's uh, under two weeks. So I'm like, hmm, okay. <laughs> That's interesting. So um, anyway, long story short is I, I bought a computer um, about six weeks ago <laughs> <laughs> from Apple, returned that computer uh, about a uh, maybe 12 days after I bought it, you know, two maybe a day or two before uh, it was going to be my computer. <laughs> And then I, I bought another one from Best Buy rather than, you know, because you can't just buy the same computer uh, over and over again because I returned the computer to Apple and then they're like, oh, sorry, we don't. Uh, and then I'm like, well, I need to buy the same computer back again. And they're like, sorry, we don't have it. I was like, that computer right there I'm returning. You can give me that computer back. <laughs> But they were like, no, we can't do that. I'm like, I, I just actually, I just handed it to you. You can just hand it back. <laughs> it's fine. They're like, no, we don't have the, we don't have this computer in stock. Um, even though you just handed us the exact same computer you want. I'm like, uh, okay. So then I go to Best Buy. Anyway, long story short is I'm on about my twelfth computer in the last six weeks. <laughs> I just, keep, I just keep buying them and returning them, depending on the store. I think this is uh, – this one I'm on today is Best Buy. Um, and my last one was uh, – I think I've even tried Radio Shack at one point. <laughs> like, hey, you guys have computers? And they're like, yeah, we got a – what kind of calculator do you want? Like, no, I don't want a calculator. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so um, yeah, that's why I've been having some computer issues. But yeah, we're uh, we're good to go. Apple just told me that my my old computer should be ready for pickup in about mm, another three months. So. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna ask, like, what's wrong with the initial computer that it's taken this long? Like, I thought Apple, the whole spit, like stick with Apple was that it didn't break, like ever. <laughs> And, and then if it did, like, they were going to take care of you. And, like, that was the whole thing. Now it's going to, like, take four months, five months for you to get a computer back. Yeah. I take I, my computer uh, and they tell me it's either dead or, like, uh, you know, they can fix yeah. it in, like, two days. That's, those right. are the options. I know. Yeah, no, the best is, like, uh, okay, so you guys can fix it. Like, oh, yeah, we can fix it, but we don't know if we have the part. It's like, well, where am I? <laughs> am I an Apple? Because... Don't you guys, aren't you the ones that make the parts? Can't you just make a new part? What, where, where am I right now? Like, you're, I'm in the Apple store, and you're telling me you don't have an Apple computer? Like, uh, what's going on, bro? Yeah, yeah. it's like when I was missing a screw from my uh, microphone mounting. And they're like, we can't send you a screw, sir. And I'm like, look, it's like one screw. It's like a weird screw that I can't go buy at Home Depot because you made it that way. Like, just send me a screw. It's okay. They're like, no, you have to send us back the $300 thing you just bought from us and then rebuy it again. And maybe the next one will have a screw in it, sir. <laughs> like, okay, well, I'm just going to buy a knockoff then. 
That'd be cool. It'd be like $30. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Yeah. All right. So let's talk baseball, Gray. We, we've heard yeah. the computer complaining stories. Let's get into it. Otherwise, everybody will complain that we're going an hour because we, we just talk nonsense for 30 minutes. Um, all right. First up, Riley Green gets the call up. Um, it's his number five overall prospect. In 2021, he had 14 home runs, six stolen bases, right around 300, and that was across two levels. Um, obviously, it was a, a shortened season for the minors. Uh, he only had slightly over 100 games, um, and those numbers are completely wrong, so just completely ignore everything I said. He went 24, 24 and, 16, and 16, not, not 14, 14 and 16. Mm, um, uh, so so it, it, 17, 17 here in 2022, 2022 he has one, yeah, home, one, one home, three stone bases across, across A ball, triple A, hitting 274, 374 338, 387, 87, 15 games. He's now, He's hitting, now hitting 100, 100 for two games in the majors. I mean, we've been talking about Riley Green, but now that he's officially up, let's let's really kind of dig in here and, and talk about him rest of season. I mean, I don't think he's he's going back down, assuming he doesn't like hit zero the rest of the way out yeah um so okay so i was uh, i think i wrote a uh, a riley green um by uh i think it was like two weeks ago uh and i also i wrote a riley green uh rookie outlook outlook post back in uh i think it was uh october november of last year because uh I assumed he was going to be up with the uh, Tigers at some point. I wasn't sure when, uh, blah, blah, blah. So then it looked like he was going to break camp with the team, but he fractured his foot, and that set him back. I think he was out for about six weeks. And, you know, um, speaking of fractured foot, oh, please, Ozzy Albies, come back soon. Okay, anyway, so, uh, you know, so then Riley Green, so essentially was, um, I think, was going to be a top five prospect at, you know, at any point, because he was, uh, well, at least for the last, you know, six months, because he's a five tool guy. So he's got power, speed. He should hit for average even. Um, he hasn't necessarily always done that, but he, he should hit for average, uh, you know, if his, as long as his Ks are kept in check. So, like, the strikeouts are probably my biggest concern with him, because every time he... Uh, gets promoted up to a new level, it seems like his strikeouts uh, balloon a little bit higher. And mm -hmm. then he hits for a little bit lower average at first. And then, like, he, it, gets, it comes into check and he hits for a good, you know, a decent average and everything comes together. So, you know, like I was, I was saying in my original rookie outlet post back in uh, October, November, that he seems like the type – that is going to, uh, you know, come up, hit 230, then, you know, maybe hit 250, and then, like, you know, and then maybe, because he's still very young, by the way. He's only, he's 21 years old. So then by the time he was 23, I was saying in my Outlook post that he's going to hit, you know, 280, and people are going to be like, wow, is Riley Green an average hitter now? And it's like, yeah, he always was. It's just he was only 21 years old. So that was sort of my, like, you know, random prediction back in October of last year. That could still happen, by the way. I, you know, I, it, it's weird. Whenever rookies come up, you don't know exactly what to expect. You know, it's uh, it's it's never, you know, it's never a linear line, uh, at least not usually for most of these guys. So I think, you know, Riley Green could potentially hit 220 or he could hit 280. Those are the only two things that are really, I think, up in question. Like he has great power, great speed. I mean, he could potentially hit 15-15 uh, in the rest of the season, which is, you know, uh, roughly, where are we at? Like 90, 100 games left. So, uh, you know, like that's pretty good. Prorated over the season, that's like mm -hmm. a 2020 season from a rookie, which is really good. I mean, for a rookie to have a 2020 season would be excellent. So if I'm saying he could be 15-15 this year, 
you know, I, I you respect the projections. I mean, that's that's excellent. That that is not something you probably are going to get from anyone else uh, as far as call ups. I don't think there's going to be, you know, this the rest of this year at least. I don't think we're going to see a bat quite as impactful as Riley Green. If we, you know, we might get another guy come up and hit well, uh, you know, like uh, who, like Juan. Yepes from the Cardinals, for instance, like he came up and he was really good for like a couple weeks. And then we saw him, you know, sort of fall back to where he was going to be uh, originally. It's just he came up and he was hot originally. You know, Riley Green, whether he's hot originally or whether he's cold, it's kind of irrelevant. The tools are there like he is an excellent hitter. It's not it's not a matter of, you know, whether or not he can do it. It's just a matter a matter of whether or not when he will do it. Uh, he could do it immediately. And for that reason, I would grab him in every league. I grabbed him in our RCL league, which is a 12 team mixed league. I would grab him in a 10 team mixed league. I would grab him in any league, really. I, I think he's probably the guy, the call up out of all the guys we're going to talk about, you know, uh, other guys who came up. Uh, Kirilov and uh, O'Neill Cruz and uh, C.J. Abrams sounds like he is coming up. We're going to be talking about them. But out of all of them, Riley Green, I think, is the guy. Fair enough. Uh, I, I kind of like uh, both Cruz and Abrams uh, just from a, a speed standpoint. I think their speed is, is probably plays up uh, a little bit better than Riley Green's does. Riley Green has speed. No, no question he has speed. Um, but I think he's really just kind of a smart baseball player and understands when to steal bases. Whereas like O'Neill Cruz and CJ Abrams have like legitimate 60, you know, 60 grade speed. Uh, so, um, I will say that just from a, you know, who, who is the number one call up? I, I think it could be any three of them. We're going to talk about the others here. Um, I, I think any of them could honestly, honestly be the number, the number one, one across, across the rest of the, rest of the season. season. Uh, for uh, Riley, Riley Green, Green, I will I say, say when he does get moved up, he, the, the strikeouts may come uh, up up with him when he gets promoted. But the average really hasn't ever kind of bottomed out other than a, a very short stint kind of in, in 2019 at A-ball. Um, but again, he was 18 at A-ball that, in 24 games. So uh, other than that little stint, like he's always kind of maintained the average I'm not saying he's going to maintain a 300 average like he has in the minors. That's not that's not generally how we you know we see hitters come up and project straight forward. Um, you know, but but 265, 270, and then like you said, the the upside is like a 15, 15. I think 10, 10 is very reasonable and and very much in play for him um, on the west on the west way. rest, rest of, of the way out. Way out. Um, yeah, yeah, I agree. I think uh, you know, not to uh, m- to make sure people understand what I'm saying. Uh, I don't want to get it. don't get it twisted. Um, I don't think uh, Riley Green necessarily has to be the best guy out of these. I just think uh, long term, I think he's got the biggest upside. I think Riley Green, like for this year, I mean, it could be it could be anyone. Re- it could be a guy who we don't even know yet could be the best call up for the rest of the year. I'm just saying like, if it, if it were to be like the best guy because of, you know, the best uh, prospect grades, Riley Green's the guy. I mean, he's like you said, he's an itch. He's an itch top five overall guy. He's, he's a top prospect. Um, yeah. You know, like, you know, like if a a a uh, jarred um, clinic were to be called up and I were to say, you know, like when he was called up, I probably said a similar thing that he's like, he's the best prospect call up. Now, obviously that didn't work out <laughs> in, a, in a really profound way. He was awful <laughs> and he continued to be awful for many, many games. But when he was called up, I probably said something like he's going to be the best call up. Obviously, it didn't work out. But if you're just going on, like, you know, prospect grades, Riley Green's the best prospect we're going to see coming up this year. Um, Whether or not he performs at that level, who knows? I I don't know. Yeah. 
All right, let's talk about another guy that, that got called back up. Um, we've seen him at the major league level before. I feel like we we spoke this one into existence. I, I told you I wasn't going to stop talking about him until he got called up. And, you know, the Twins, you know, they, they relinquished and they, they have called him up. Uh, he's no, actually no longer a rookie. He exceeded his limits last year. But this is Alex Kirilov we're talking about. Um, he, he's coming back up. 35 games at AAA this year. He had 359, 465. 64, 641, 10 home runs, one stolen base. We know he can hit triple A pitching, and that's that's of no question. Do you think he can carry it over this time? Uh, yeah. <laughs> that was that. That was the confidence level on that. Uh, you know, uh, first of all, now that we are no longer using our uh, dream catcher for Alex Kirilov, can we use it for Matt Olson to be better? <laughs> Can we, can, we, can we wish cast towards Matt Olson? Is that yes. possible? I'm in. Okay, great. Uh, I think Kirilov, you know, like unlike uh, Riley Green, who just needs to have a, you know, Riley Green just needs to hit some homers and steal some bags, and he's only going to be so bad, where Kirilov needs to hit for power and probably needs to hit for average, which, you know, it's a, uh, it's a bit of a taller order because he has, you know, zero speed. So it's unlikely, you know, it, Kirilov is kind of like a guy where, you know, if he does well, I'm for him in all leagues. But honestly, I picked him up in our, our, our 12-team mixed league uh, RCL and – I mean, I might not hold them, to be honest. I, I could potentially drop. I could see dropping them even this week. I don't know. You know, like, he's, like, at, you know, at best, he is uh, power and average. But reality, for a mixed league, he's probably replaceable for most shallower mixed leagues. I don't know. I It depends on how well he hits when he first gets called up. If he hits well... Then sure, I mean, you know, I think what we're looking at on the best on the best case scenario side is probably Hunter Renfro, and on the worst case, it's probably a guy who you can just pick up off of waivers, like a you know, just like a hot bat, like anyone really, you know. Uh, so I think uh, you know, like a Brad Miller, <laughs> like could be as good as Alex Kirilov if Brad Miller was hot, uh, you know. So you know, I like Kirilov. Long term, I uh, I actually I like him a lot. You know, I, I just think he needs everyday playing time. He needs to hit, and is uh, you know he's probably replaceable in shallower leagues. So I would I would probably you know I would look at I would look at grabbing him to see if he comes up hot. But uh, you know, obviously I'm I'm hedging a lot with him. I mean, he's <laughs> fine. I I, I don't. Yeah. I don't dislike him. It's just like eh, he's kind of replaceable too. Yeah, when you when part of the game that you're counting on is going to be average, and he's not going to bring at least early in his career. I don't expect him to bring like you know 40 home run power. So when you're kind of expecting the balance of average and power, you're right. There is something that ha- that's to be said for that because it is a tough double, you know, to 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 kind of have. Um, but he is hitting five and six in their lineup so far since he's been called up. That's good to see that at least they're calling up the in the bottom, the bottom of their lineup. lineup. Um, um, I'm a big Kirloff fan, so I'm just going to say that and leave that for what it is. I have him in a number of leagues. Um, so I, th- I think he's worth a pick up. The dual eligibility certainly helps with that, too. First base outfield, so you have him for corner infield, or you can put him in outfield. That gives you a little bit of flexibility. Um, that's always nice to have on your bench, especially in shallower bench leagues. Now, moving on to a guy that needs to be picked up everywhere. Uh, after being kind of faked out initially, O'Neill Cruz is, I believe, we still haven't like seen him on a roster. O'Neill Cruz is coming up. Um, he had 232, 336, 422, nine home runs, 11 stolen bases in the minors this year. But since the start of May, He's hitting 263, and since the start of June, he's hitting 277 with the strikeouts coming down quite a bit over that time. Now, we talked about inches rankings. You talked about how we we have, um, you know, Riley Green at five. Abrams comes in at four, and O'Neill Cruz comes in at two. I actually traded O'Neill Cruz to Itch in a dynasty league 
because O'Neill he just loves O'Neill Cruz. I think he's probably the highest person in that has any kind of real prospect pedigree here. We're talking about on O'Neill Cruz. Why don't you talk to me about what you expect? I mean, the, the K rate is, I think, a concern, but we saw him for a little bit last year, and he did fine. Yeah, no, definitely. You know, O'Neill Cruz is, uh, I, I could see why Itch is so high on O'Neill Cruz. Um, you know, just put it out there for me, for big pitcher, I'd probably say Riley Green, then O'Neill Cruz, um, and then and then Abrams, and then Kirilov. Uh, yes. We're not doing this in any sort of order, <laughs> so that's so that's relatively confusing, but not completely. I, I think people can follow along. So O'Neill Cruz, I, I mean, I can kind of understand why Itch is so high on him because I think, well, O'Neill Cruz, you have to be high on him because he's seven feet tall. <laughs> yeah. So I think I know why he's so high on him because he hits the ball so hard. So I think O'Neill Cruz, you know, like last year. In only, I want to say two games last year, he had like a top five overall max exit velocity. So what that means for the uh, layperson, um, I, you know, it's like if you can hit the ball that hard, even if it's only once, like a max exit velocity is essentially saying like if you can hit the ball once that hard, you're going to hit the ball hard in general. I mean, it's just in general, you're just going to hit the ball hard. So, I mean, if no one's seen O'Neill Cruz and hasn't seen how he hits the ball, I mean, he can hit a, a ball three inches off the ground and the, on the outside corner for a home run. Like he's able to, he's able to basically golf out homers. He's, he can hit the high fastball. He can hit a lot. He can hit basically any pitch for a home run because he hits everything so hard because he has such long arms uh, and he's, you know, he's got a beautiful swing. I mean, he really is. He, he, he should be great. I I don't, the pirates suck. (laughs) I mean, (laughs) by the way, the tigers suck too. So, you know, that's, you know, no offense to our, our many uh, Pirates and Tigers listeners, all three of them. But, I, you know, I think the the Pirates are probably even a little bit better than the Tigers, to be honest. But the Pirates, but PNC is terrible. Not that Comerica is that good either. But, you know, it's like O'Neill Cruz is not in a great place. I mean, Riley Green wasn't in a great place either. So, I mean, you know, both, neither of them, I wish they were coming up to, like, you know, great surroundings and, like, you know, shoving them into, like, the Yankees lineup or something, but that's not happening. Uh, O'Neill Cruz, I think could be, you know, I, I really feel like O'Neill Cruz could be the top call up too. like Riley green or O'Neill Cruz. It's kind of like, it, it's a bit of like, you know, uh, six of one, half a dozen of another. I think uh, O'Neill Cruz probably has more power and potentially more speed uh, I think he's going to, I think he could actually, he hit for a worse average though. So, and an average in a way that could actually be hurt. Like it could hurt. Like he could hit for a 220 average. Like he might, he might bottom out in batting average. I don't know if he will necessarily. Like, you know, he made decent contact in AAA. Uh, and eventually he was hitting really well. Towards the end there, I think in his final uh, his final month there, he was hitting really. Uh, I I don't know the exact number, but I think he was hitting really well. Um, so I I like O'Neill Cruz a lot. He's got power and speed, which is immediate immediately like you know a a grab for every league. Uh, I'm excited. I have him in my actually I have him in my keeper league, and I kept him all you know for the two months while I was waiting for him to get called up. So I, I'm definitely committed. I, I, I'm a big fan. I think he could be, he could be a like 25, 30, 30 Homer, 20 steel, 250 hitter as soon as next year. Like he could be really excellent. Um, so I'm a, I'm a huge fan. I, Th- this year worries me a little bit just to see where his, uh, you know, where his average is at because like it took a it took a lot of him 
hitting well in like the last month because going into like I think going into May, like he was hitting like 180 in Triple A for a while. Like it, it might have been a motivational thing because you know he was pissed off at the Pirates for demoting him. Yeah, I don't I don't know for sure, but he wasn't hitting well for a long for a good stretch in the minors this year. I mean he's probably fine and he'll probably hit for you know 240 plus. But there's a chance here his batting average could bottom out, at least for this year. Eventually, he'll figure it out, and he's going to be a superstar. But, you know, for right now, uh, it's a little bit concerning maybe on the average. Yeah, when it comes to prospect guys, there tends to be two, like, separate, and then, you know, everybody kind of falls in the middle of of it. But, like, there's there's guys that go for the tools. And and O'Neill Cruz is a tools guy. Like, the tools on O'Neill Cruz are super loud. He could mash the ball. He's fast. Like, everything's there missing the hit tool. Hit tool. And then there's and the hit tool hit guys. Tool and mm-hmm. that's, that's, like, you know, the people you know, who are going to like Riley Green, Green more or more of the hit tool guy. C.J. Abrams more. He's more of a hit tool guy, although he has all sorts of tools as well. But O'Neill Cruz just has, like, everything to put together to have, like, Stanton power and then still chip in you know, 15, 20 stolen bases on top of that. So that's that's the type of thing we're talking about if he figures out the hit tool part of it. Yeah. Um, let's talk about uh, Manny Machado has the ankle leg thing. If you are squeamish, don't, don't watch that video. It's not good. Um, we're still waiting to see kind of what timeline that is. But C.J. Abrams, in the meantime, is coming up. Number four on Itch's most recent update in AAA in 30 games, he had 314, 364, 507, seven home runs, 10 stolen bases. Um, you know, I mentioned kind of O'Neill Cruz being like a, a 60 speed guy. Abrams is an 80. He, he's he's going to steal bases. That's, that's just what he's going to do. Uh, not a great show in his first time up, at least average wise, 182. Um, but where are you at on Abrams' rest season? I love C.J. Abrams. I'm a big fan of his. But uh, where, where do you think? Do you think he's staying up if Manny Machado's back in, say, three weeks to a month? Yeah, it probably depends on what Abrams does. I think, uh, you know, I honestly, I had Abrams all over the place uh, to begin the year when he was with the Padres, and it was miserable own, uh, owning him. <laughs> That's not good. Uh, I, that was, you know, a small sample size and I'm sure he'll be fine. Uh, it was just a, it was a miserable experience. <laughs> it was just from, <laughs> I feel like I'm at a, uh, <laughs> I'm at a meeting now of CJ Abrams, uh, previous owners. Uh, it was just, it was bad, man. Uh, I had, uh, you know, I had such high hopes for him and he really, he kicked me in the old uh, ungats. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, I li- so I like him. Obviously, I think you know his tools should translate quicker than anyone because he has such crazy speed. Like if he's able to get on base, he could you know he could steal twenty bags in like you know three months um, of uh, you know that's. And for those who are really bad at math, that's like a 40 steel guy over the course of a season. <laughs> so I, you know, I think, uh, I think I'd grab them everywhere, especially places where you need steals and like who doesn't need steals. I mean, everyone needs those. So yeah, I mean, he's worth grabbing. Honestly, I think Machado, um, I don't know. I, I would guess like, like you said, we don't really have the information right now as we record this, I would say Machado is probably going to be out for three weeks to a month. I don't know if, uh, you know, who knows? I I have no idea uh, of his injury, but if Abrams is up even for, you know, even for two weeks, he's worth grabbing to see what happens. I mean, maybe he comes up and he steals like a few bags, hits a home run or two and, you know, does well. He's, he should be like, I thought he was going to like what I expected going into the year. Like he should be, the Padres leadoff guy and like have like Trey Turner, like light type numbers. Like yeah. that's the kind of player he is. I mean, he could be like Trey Turner, but right now, I mean, you know, he's nothing more than a flyer at this point. 
Right. I mean, he's still young. He's he's 21 years old, coming up to the majors. So anytime you're talking about 21 year old coming up to the majors, there's some adjustments that are likely to be made. But he's already seen it. He had some time to go back down and kind of work on some things, and he was absolutely crushing the ball in the minors. Um, so I'm I'm still grabbing C.J. Abrams everywhere I can get him. Uh, I think for me for rest of season. I think Riley Green is probably number one for me just because he does have power speed and his the hit tools there. Tool and he's there. not going he's anywhere. Not going he's got call up. He's, he, he's staying. He's staying. I think O'Neill mm-hmm. Cruz is two again because he's not going anywhere. Abrams three, Kirilov four. Abrams would move up to two for me if I knew he was staying around. But there's there's definite possibility in a month that the Padres is like, no, go ahead and back down. We want to play you every day rather than have you coming in and out of the lineup. You know, you're you're too good for us to be doing that to you. Um, that being said, like Hassan Kim doesn't need to play every day. They could they could easily find a way for him to, to do that. And Abrams has played a little bit of outfield in the majors and minors this year. So if they can switch him in and out for some outfield spots, maybe there's a little bit there. And honestly, the like the one and two spot are kind of up for grabs. Cronenworth is gonna stay up there, but like he could take profile spot at the top if he gets going. Yeah, agreed. All right, you talked about Ozzy Albies. I just want to talk about him real quick since he did get transferred to the 60-day IL. I mean, it's tough, but if you're in a redraft league and you're filled with IL spots, are you hanging on to him because we know what kind of difference maker he can be in a minimal time? Or just knowing how much time he's missing, are you potentially dropping him or trying to find just a any kind of trade that will help you fill that void right now? Um, can I trade his foot onto Matt Olson's body. Is that, is that a trade I can do? <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I'm holding the other way. I'm holding Albies for, uh, I mean, unless, unless you're really like, you know, in a IL crunch, I would say you got to hold Albies assuming, you know, uh, 60 days puts him at like, I think mid August as a return. So you have him for the final six weeks of the season. Yeah, I mean, it seems worth holding on to him for that. Um, you know, I mean, every I think every team is probably going to have a, a different scenario. So it, it depends on your team. Like if you have, you know, five guys on the IL already, then, you know, I mean, I guess Albie's, Albie's final six weeks might not be much better than, you know, uh John Birdie's final six weeks. I mean, who knows? You know, like I, 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 I've, in other words, you you might be able to get a guy off of waivers rather than hold Albie. So yeah, I mean, he's droppable, but I'm I'm holding him personally. Yeah, I, I would try everything I can to hold him. Um, but yeah, if you're in a roster crunch, if you're like in our RCLs, twelve teams, three man bench, we only have two ILs, I believe, or maybe three. I think it's three, but yeah, it, it's not. It's hard, yeah, right? it's it's tight. I in the RCL twelve team league, I probably drop Albies in my. Uh, I have Albies in a uh, NL only where I'm absolutely holding them. I have Albies in a fifteen team uh, mix league where I'm holding them as well for now. Um, but yeah, ten team or twelve team, you can probably move on. All right, All right. Let's, let's talk about another call up, Jaron Duran. Um, down in, in AAA, he was hitting 305, 379, 531, six home runs, three, 11 stolen bases. Um, he's been kind of shuffled back up and forth for like a game or two here and there. We got Kiki on the L. He's actually been leading off when he's in the lineup, which was, I believe, three of the last four games since he's been called up. Um, he's another one. Do you think he's sticking up this time around? Um Projections for Rudy rest season is 248, five home runs, stolen, seven stolen bases. So it seems like just from the numbers, Rudy at least putting him into a, a mostly uh, remaining in the lineup situation right now. Right. Yeah. Those uh, those numbers don't sound accurate whatsoever. <laughs> it sounds like so. Like if, if Duran is going to be in the lineup, there's no way he's getting those numbers. I mean, those sound like like a different player. <laughs> I, I, unless I'm misreading Duran completely because to me, Duran could steal 50 bags. Like if you see, if you watch Duran play, you're like, wow, this guy is a difference maker when it comes to steals. But also if you see his numbers, I mean, this is also like, there's a, a small sample size thing happening here, but 
you know, for right now, I don't know if he's a major league player. Like he may not be, he may be a quad a player. I don't know. Like it's starting to, it's starting to be concerning when I see like every time he gets promoted, he strikes out so much and he can't, he can't handle major league pitching so far. Like it's like he has a, a four, as of the recording of this, he has a four twelve Babbitt with only a two six nine average like that. That's not sustainable. That that's a that's a two ten average waiting to happen. Even with his speed, he's not going to have a four twelve Babbitt. I mean, maybe maybe a three seventy Babbitt at best if he's uh, even with his speed. Like his speed is crazy. Anyone who's watched him play, and he's got good power too. Like if you if you see him, like he's able to. I think he's able to hit like ten homers and steal fifty bags. Which is like, like that's crazy. That's like, oh my god, you know, that's someone you want in every league. But then you see like his inability to, uh, you know, make contact on the major league level, and you're like, uh, I mean, can, is he not a major league hitter? I don't know. I and also, I don't think he's staying up. Or if he stays up, I don't think he's going to be an everyday player. Once, uh, you know, either Enrique Hernandez returns or any, or or they just get back. Um, uh, I guess it would be Enrique would be the guy who they would be getting back. Yeah, I mean, I think once he comes back, I don't know. I don't know if Durant stays up, at, at least not the way he's hitting right now. I, I just don't see it. Yeah, I, I'm with you. I, I think that there's definitely a chance he's getting sent back down whenever uh, – Enrique is healthy again. I, I do think, you know, it, it is a small sample size. It's only been seven games for him. So initially striking out a bunch, that that just kind of seems par for the course. Um, I'm willing to give him a little bit of pass, but I think among the names we've talked about, he is last of those guys for me. Again, he just isn't of the same necessarily pedigree of him, of them, and and then the, the chance of getting sent down. Yeah. All right, moving on to an arm this time is is Shane Baz, who is coming back from injury. Um, he had four starts at AAA this year, 138, 0.92 whip, 37.7 K rate, 7.5 walk rate. Um, he's back up. He's had two starts. He's gone eight and a third, given up five earned, nine strikeouts, three walks. Uh, Shane Baz is, uh, I mean, he's one of the top arms out there in the minor league systems. Are you, again, pick, is he a pickup in every format? Are you maybe streaming him in shallower leagues? Where are you at on Shane Baz? Oh, yeah. No, he's he should be 100% owned in every league. I think he's, uh, I think he's probably, I had him ranked, I believe, like top 30 before it was announced that he was having uh, his uh, elbow operated on. And that's a, a surgery, unlike a, you know, a Tommy John or something. Uh, you know, the surgery he had is fairly minor and it, it, the recovery time shouldn't be, you know, any, any much longer than he's had already. I think he's fine. He's good to go. Um, I, you know, he's a guy who I, I think if I were re-ranking right now, I'd probably rank him at round like top 30 to 40 just because of, you know, there's a little bit of risk involved, I guess. But yeah, he's he, he's an ace waiting to happen. I mean, he's probably like, you know, him or Dylan Cease, if if Boz were completely healthy is kind of what I'm thinking, uh, you know, so and I think he probably is healthy by this point, but, you know, maybe not. So because of there's that risk involved, then I would probably drop him a little bit further down. But yeah, no. Yeah. Shane Boz is like he's a top arm for sure. Yeah, absolutely. He is. And just since, uh, you know, we, we told you where it's just having these guys. He's the number two pitcher on it's his uh, most recent update. He's number eight behind George Kirby, who we've already seen up. And then number nine is uh, Grayson Rodriguez, who comes in right behind him. So. You know, there's there's a lot of, of upside here with, with Shane Baz and what he can bring. I, yeah, I agree. Grab him everywhere. Let's move over to a couple Brave starters, Gray. Uh, Spencer Strider, as a starter since he's made the switch, four starts, 19 and two-thirds innings, 
31 Ks, 10 walks, a 275 ERA, 107 whip. Spencer Strider looks great. I know I am in Atlanta, so I hear a lot about fans just talking about him. They they love him down here. Are you as uh, in love with Spencer Strider as the as the Atlians are? I well, you know, with his mustache, I I actually am very in love with him. <laughs> I I wonder if uh, I wonder if a brave starter can last longer than uh, twenty starts, though. <laughs> that's that's my biggest concern with the Braves. You know, going back to what we've said in previous shows, you know, I like the Tuki Toussaint thing has really got me shook when it comes to <laughs> break starters and uh hey oscar you know and you know just guys just coming out of nowhere and being like wow mike soroka he's gonna be an ace <laughs> it's like wait whatever happened to that guy <laughs> does, does he exist still I, I know he had a he had achilles issues um but it's just like they have so many of these guys that just like come out of nowhere and you're like oh wow like, this guy is going to be amazing. I love this Tucker Davidson guy. And it's like, no, nah, you don't. <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, I love, uh, hey, Oscar, you know. No, you don't. Oh, what about Tuki Toussaint? Nope, you don't like him either anymore. You liked him for three weeks. Now you don't like him. So I do like Spencer Strider. I, I mean, I think he's he looks excellent. I have, you know, I have no issue with grabbing him in every league. I think uh, – you know, he's definitely worth um, rostering. Can he keep this up? I don't know. I thought Ian Anderson would keep it up, <laughs> and he's been terrible this year. You know, it's like Ian Anderson was amazing last year. This year, uh, Ian Anderson has like a 7.5K per 9. So, yeah, I mean, I think Spencer Strider for right now, I w- I'm absolutely all about him, but – you know, I am a little concerned for dynasty leagues. I'd be, I'd be a little hesitant about pushing all my chips in for a brave starter. Yeah, I, I can certainly understand that based on, you know, like you said, we, we've talked about it before. Um, he was in the bullpen to, to begin the year. There's kind of a long man, and then they finally decide to give him a starting position. So there's always that possibility of lingering in the back of your head, too. It's like, oh, if they... They stuck him as a long man before. They could do it. They could do it again. Um, but yeah, I mean, he looks great right now. All the numbers are phenomenal. He's throwing, you know, just absolute gas. 98, 99, mile an hour fastball, nasty slider. Um, so yeah, everything looks great for now. I mean, if we're choosing between brave starters, I'd still take Kyle Wright over him. Um, I just feel better about the pitch mix. I feel better that we've seen. Uh, you know, an extended look at, at Kyle Wright as a starter, but Spencer Strider's too for me right now, and at least in the Braves' arms. Mm-hmm. Uh, number who, who's not number two for me right now is Charlie Morton. Uh, I know some people kind of, uh, you know, they they enjoyed his, his last start. Uh, it was against uh, my Cubbies. Obviously, we're terrible, terrible, and the wind was blowing in, so that kind of aided him in going the seven innings, nine strikeouts. Um, are, are you back in on Charlie Morton after a strong outing? Some of the spin numbers are, are looking a little bit better. Um, but where are you on Charlie Morton? Uh, you know, I think um, I'm kind of concerned about, like, Charlie Morton's numbers look like he's, he looks like he's starting to fade a little bit. Like, uh, the age is finally starting to catch up to him uh, a, a tad or – or it's the mechanics. Something, something's a little bit off with him. He doesn't look completely right. Like his, um, you know, like his, uh, uh, his, his, uh, what should we call it? The percentage of the uh, the swings in the inside the strike zone is uh, is very high, and the and his swinging strikes is down. So you know, like he's he's not missing bats like he was, and he but he is missing the plate more. So he's kind of like he's kind of in the zone and getting hit and then also out of the zone and walking guys, which isn't a great it's not a great mix. Uh, He doesn't look like as bad as he's been. If you just look at his um, ERA and his also his velocity is fine. So that's why I'm kind of wondering if it's maybe a mechanics thing. I don't know. I, 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 I don't hate Charlie Moore necessarily like in a deeper league because. Like I said, his ERA is probably over where it should be. Like he could, 
He could have some a positive regression. Is that that's not a thing? Positive that's, regression yeah, that's, sounds like an an irony. It, it sounds like an oxymoron. Uh, it's like so we could have a jumbo shrimp. Okay, yeah. So his his jumbo shrimp could be better. <laughs> I I think he is likely. You know, I mean, he's worth rostering in fifteen team mixed leagues and deeper in a twelve team mixed league. I mean, yeah, I, I would probably, you know, he's probably a streamer in a, like an RCL league, but the, those are shallow leagues and you got to stream a lot of guys. So I'd probably, I'd probably stream out Morton in some of the shallower leagues, but I would, in a deeper league, I could actually see a buying opportunity for a deeper league if he were, you know, cause he just needs, he just needs to fix his command. And, you know, that's fixable versus like, you know, his velocity being down or something. Yeah, I, I don't I don't even know if it's necessarily the command that concerns me that the breaking balls just aren't they're not breaking like he, he I know we talked about this early in the season um, and in the spin rate. Like I said, it's come back up. So I, I do think it's something mechanical where, you know, the spin is it's not it's there, but it's not creating the same, the same movement. movement. It could be, it could the, be new the new ball. ball. Um, but it's not but breaking it's not horizontally. Really horizontally. It's not it's breaking not vertically, vertically like it has, it has last few seasons season. when he's really been performing. Uh, the, the strikeouts are there. So I think from a fantasy perspective, he's somebody you can stream or, you know, keep on the back end of your roster because the Ks are there. Um, but that's, again, it's, I think it's an ERA risk as of right now to be continue running them out there in the game against the Cubs where he had nine strikeouts. I mean, Keegan Thompson was on the other stri- side with nine strikeouts. That's a career high for him. The, the situations of the game were just playing to hitter or to the pitchers, um, whatever the wind's blowing in as hard as it was that day. So I- I'm taking this chance to sell Charlie Morton if I can, um, but I'm perfectly fine as a back end streamer or two. Mm. Yeah. Okay. All right, I was really high on Pablo Lopez, and then in June he's had a six four eight ERA with a one three eight WHIP. Velocity is down across the board on all his pitches from last year. Um, none of the pitches are showing the same horizontal movement they have, you know, in the last couple of years. Are you worried about Pablo Lopez? Do you think he figures it out? What, what are we doing here, Greg? Save, save me. Tell me he's gonna be okay. No, <laughs> he's not. <laughs> He's not. I, I I was out on him coming into the year. I mean, he had a shoulder injury in September of last year. It was I don't I don't think it was ever fully addressed. I you know I'm I'm pretty concerned. I think you know what we saw was a guy who was good in the beginning of the year because he had a full off season of rest, and now that he's pitched two months, it's starting to catch up to him. I, yeah, I would be. I'd be selling if I were, you know, someone who had Pablo Lopez. I don't have him, though. So, you know, I'm good. Yeah, that doesn't make me feel any better, Gray. Thanks. <laughs> um, My bad. I mean, through the end of May, he had a 183 ERA. We were looking at a guy with over a 9K per nine. Every, I mean, everything was working great for, for him. But, yeah, I do wonder if, if maybe that, that injury is catching up to him or maybe the number of innings. The most he's ever thrown is 111 in any season. Um, so there, there's maybe a potential concern that he's he's heading for an IL stint. Um, you know, it's only a few bad outings, so I'm not giving up on Pablo Lopez, but I have sat him down um, in a couple of leagues where I have a number of, of good pitchers and good, good matchups this week uh, so that he can kind of figure it out and I can feel a little bit better about throwing him out let there. Give, uh, let me give you a, uh, an either or who do you want Pablo Lopez or Robbie Ray? Uh, I'll take Ray for the strikeouts. Wow. I'm, I'm same, 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 same. Even when Pablo's going his best, he's slightly over nine K per nine, you know, like 20, 20- Four, 25 26 percent i mean robbie ray can be a, a 30 plus percent k rate guy yeah word all right uh moving over uh john birdie i mean he, he's gone off flash uh the savior of the stolen base category for us this year already a career high in stolen bases at, at 32 years old he has 18 stolen bases in 36 games he's got two home runs 22 runs 11 rbis uh, he is moving all over the lineup, but 
just stealing wherever he goes. Top 50 in sprint speed and 90 foot splits. I mean, can John Birdie keep this up or is he going to morph back into John Birdie? Um, no, I think he could keep it up more or less. I mean, I, I don't know if he's necessarily going to keep up his batting average, which is kind of driving the steals in a lot of ways. So, yeah, I mean, I don't, I mean, I would definitely grab him in every league right now while he's hitting and, you know, he's stealing bases. He does have speed, as you mentioned. So if he can get on base, he can steal bases. I don't know. Like, I don't think they have anyone else really like to uh, supplant him. Um, I, so I would guess he's going to continue getting at bats. You know, they, um, you know, if he's getting, and if he's getting at bats, he's going to steal bases as long as he's getting on base. So yeah, I mean, I don't know. He seems fine for Sagnoff. Nothing else really. I mean, he steals uh, more or less. I, I was looking at his steals and I have him on an NL only uh, team. I have him on uh, a team where I need steals. And I ha- and for some reason, he has 18 steals on the year. And on my team, I only have 16 steals. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how that's possible. I, somehow, I've gotten negative points for steals, I think. <laughs> i got to look at Maybe it's because I have uh, pool holes. Huh. All right. I'll, I'll look into that. Anyway, yeah, I think yeah. for... Fine for steals. He really wasn't playing very much early in the season. He had nine games in the mm-hmm. March April period and then nine games in May. He has 17 games in June. So I mean you, you gotta get playing time even in an AL only to really come in and, and you know put get in the yeah, roster. Sure. Um, um well, I guess that just depends on how good your AL only team is. <laughs> uh, NL, yeah. No, NL, it's, sorry. Not, it's not very good, but still I <laughs> I probably had him benched at one point for like, I don't, I don't, you know what? I don't even know. (laughs) It's not a good team. (laughs) All right. Fair enough. Uh, Yeah. Adam everywhere. Anybody who steals like he is needs to be on every, any, he needs to be on on, in somebody's roster. Uh, Let's talk about a couple of first basemen who have been hot here. Uh, Ryan Mountcastle, who is the only person who can hit home runs to left field in Baltimore now. He is a career career high high in barrel rate, rate, average average exit velocity, and hard hit. Uh, Luke Voigt, top three on the player radar last week. 245, nine home runs on the season in 49 games. 284, six home runs here in June. Um, You know, let's just talk about these guys for rest of season first base. Who would you rather have, and where are they kind of falling for you among first basemen? Mm, Well, I think, you know, with... With uh, Machado, his injury actually could be a good thing for Voigt, potentially, because uh, Voigt could, you know, get cemented in that sort of middle of the lineup area because they don't really have uh, another guy um, to do it. Uh, and Mount, Mountcastle, though, I, I'm going Mountcastle. Anyway, long, long story short, I'm going Mountcastle over Voigt. I think, uh, I think Mountcastle, he was actually, before they... They moved the fences back in uh, in Baltimore to try and make Dean Kramer a thing. <laughs> I don't even know. What are they thinking? What? Hey, Baltimore, your pitching sucks. If anything, move the fences in. and Let's have a home run derby every game, huh? huh? <laughs> Keep huh? the fans happy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, uh, hey, you know, uh, chicks dig the long ball. Haven't you heard? Um, yeah, so I don't know. Mountcastle, though. He was a guy who I felt like was a, a good bet for a 270 type year, uh, 270 hitter with like 30 homers. And then when they moved the fences, I was like, oh, maybe 24 homers. You know, I, I think I took like six homers off of his uh, bottom line. I was I was pretty I was a pretty big fan, though, of Mountcastle before the fences moved. I think he's actually really talented. I think Mountcastle could be like a top 12 first baseman. Um, Luke Voigt, I, I feel like he's just a hot bat right now. I, I don't have any real faith in Luke Voigt. You know, he had it, but we saw in like 2020, he could have a hot bat for two months. Like he's he's got that potential. So he could stay hot. But in general, I think Luke Voigt is more or less just like a schmatato. Okay. Okay. Uh, I think uh, I'm I, with you. Mount Castle's kind of in that back end first, t- you know, top 12 first base, somewhere in like the. 8 to 12 range past like 
I mean, even though Matt Olson sucked, you know, I'd, I'd still probably take Olson. Still probably taking Rizzo. Still probably taking uh, uh, Prone, Prone, which is just in Colorado. Colorado so probably, probably him. him. But then he can he can slot in with like Jared Walsh and Reese Hoskins, Josh Bell, guys. guys. Yeah, yeah, that sounds fair. Um, um, and then, and then I, I, I guess I, on on Voight, would you rather have him or Max Muncy? Oh, Voight for sure. I think Muncy's broken. I think okay. Muncy's got a. Uh, I mean, he had an elbow issue like in uh, September, October of last year that it never really healed. I, I don't think Muncy's right. I think he's at, I think he's at like 60% and you know, he's a, uh, he's a gamer, man. He wants to get out there and game, but he should be on the IL. I, I don't think Muncy's a hundred percent. So I wouldn't actually, in most leagues, like I had Muncy super late in my rankings and, and nothing's changed since then. I had most leagues, I don't think I'd roster Muncie, to be honest. I think he's probably droppable and like at least 12 team and shallower for sure. Yeah, his ADP with the injury just didn't make sense to me either. So I, I really don't have him like anywhere. So it's not really going to affect me. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I would take Void over Muncie. So I think Muncie probably comes in, I don't know, top top 20, somewhere around like 16, 17, somewhere in that area. Yeah. Um, for rest of the season and maybe even higher if you're just trying to try to look saying, out for some said Muncie, but you mean Void. Or Void. Yeah. Sorry, Void. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, no, I know what you meant. I I, I don't know. I, I don't know if everyone listening knew what you meant though. So that's why I was yeah. like, you know what? I'm gonna correct you. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. I, uh, we get it. <laughs> a little liquid, a little liquid paper over your words. But yeah, no, I I hear you. I think Void is probably 17 to 20 sounds about right for a first baseman. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's talk about one more guy before we move over to some bullpen and waiver wire. Um, let's let's talk about Josh Lowe, another call up. You know, 299, 382, 540, six home runs, six stolen bases. Uh, does have a 31% K rate, but an 11.5% walk rate down in the minors this year. He's coming He's coming up. Are you interested in Josh Lowe? Where does he kind of fit in with, with the prospect call-ups we've talked about so far? Yeah, no, I'm not interested in Josh Lowe at all. So he's probably going to be the best one. <laughs> he's, he's the one that's really going to be the difference maker because I could care less about Josh Lowe. I honestly, I, you know, Josh Lowe, like, look at Bruhan too. Like, the Rays, they just platoon everyone. So it, it kind of makes it difficult, at least in, like, because Josh Lowe, if he plays every day, He's an automatic for me for a 15 team mixed league or deeper. But because he's a platoon guy because of the Rays, then it, it ruins that because, well, at least for me, 15 team mixed in my head at least means a weekly league. Um, if it's a 15 team mixed league uh, daily, I guess he, I guess Josh Lowe's fine there as long as you can move him in and out of your lineup in like a daily league format. But I, I just I need to see something from Josh Lowe because like he's also come up and sent down and done nothing and and not hit for average and really like a lot of strikeouts especially like he was hitting for uh, he was striking out a lot even in AAA so like he needs to have a really high Babbitt to really be decent so that I mean, it sort of it ruins Josh Lowe for me uh, at least for now I mean if he starts doing something. Like I can, I can change that tune in under four notes. Like, <laughs> let's do it, you know. But for right now, I'm kind of like, nah. I, I want to see something from Josh Lau. Yeah, he he's more in the flyer field because he does have the power and speed to put up ridiculous home run stolen bases. But it could look a little like Rugnet or Dorish off the bat here, where he's just striking out. So like, is the 190 average he's giving you worth the home runs and stolen bases? And uh, I guess you have to make that decision on your own uh, for your team. But, uh, yeah, more of a flyer to see if it comes up as hot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Moving over to some bullpens here. Go and give us a few guys if we're sagging off and they, they might uh, get some saves or that some situations have have potentially changed, actually. Uh, yeah, well, well, Hendricks is out. I don't – you know, people haven't really been saying – I haven't heard anything like update wise on Hendricks. I don't know. Maybe I maybe I missed it over the weekend, but I mean, his his thing is forearm. Not, that doesn't sound good at all. And Graveman, 
could potentially be a top seven closer type. Like he's he could be great. So if Graveman is the closer uh, for the White Sox, then I would definitely be. I, I mean, I would be grabbing Graveman in every league. I, I already have, and I would in the shallowest of leagues. Graveman is a uh, a grab. Um, then you go over to Philly and. I was hoping by this week we would have a little bit more clarity on this situation, but Sir Anthony Hopkins Dominguez is like, he looks good, but I don't know if they want him to close. And Brad Hand looks, you know, like Brad Hand, and I think they prefer him. I don't know. (laughs) So it's kind of like, it's still up in the air, though. And um, then uh, Colin (laughs) Pahuche, Colin Colin Pock. Uh, in uh, Tampa Bay, the Colin Pahoche, I like I like to add five syllables to people's names. Uh, I you know I don't know. I guess it could be him, but I think in Tampa, it it's probably going to be like five guys are going to all get like seven saves or less. Is sort of my I, I would guess for Tampa. I don't know. You know I, again. Kevin Cash, he he wants to platoon. He wants to, like, you know, he, he's trying to make a name for himself out there. Like, what's going on, man? Just to name a closer. Like, Don Mattingly was like, I really want Tanner Scott. Everyone's like, uh, you know he's a lefty? And Don Mattingly's like, I don't care. I love Hey, also, Don Mattingly, he's not that good. I don't care. I want him. Like, all right. He's, sure. he's got two first names. It's a crowd pleaser. <laughs> Yeah, it's like it's Don. They used to call me Don Matt. <laughs> I like two first names. Uh, yeah, I don't know. So I would guess, like, out of those guys that I've mentioned, uh, Graveman, I think, is like absolutely a grab everywhere. Um, and then Dominguez or Brad Hand, I think, is kind of a coin flip. Um, and Colin Potts, I don't know, Pock, I don't even know how to say his name, to be honest. I don't know. <laughs> you can see it in Tampa, the, uh, the guy in Tampa, let's just, let's just go with that. The guy in Tampa, that's clear. That's real clear. Uh, Gray. Um, yeah. Okay. So anyway, those are kind of my guys. <laughs> yeah. And I, I'll say with Colin, uh, Pache, I think, um, Pache. I, Pache, Poche, I don't know. I'm with you. I don't know. Um, but anyways, at least the numbers are good with him. So I, I do think that from just a, an adding to your roster, he's not going to hurt you like like potentially Brad Hand might. But from a getting saves perspective, I think you're right. I think it's probably Graveman. Uh, then the Philly situation and then Colin coming in last, unfortunately. Um, it, it sounds like at least from what I can find on Liam Hendricks, He's actually going to potentially try and start a throwing program today, which would then get him ready around the start of July. Um, but when you start a throwing program, obviously anything can happen and get setbacks. So like early July would be the soonest that you're looking. So that's still, you know, two weeks worth of saves to potentially get for grade, man. That's still worth picking up. Um, yeah. Let's move over and just throw some names out for waiver wire or guys that uh, we need to be keeping an eye on, Gray, um, other than the prospects that we named early. Uh, well, Michael Harris, uh, the second. I, I don't I don't think you have to see the first one in order to appreciate the second one. Uh, I think he's been hot. Uh, not not I think he has has been hot. Um, let's uh, let's let's build up the confidence here, Greg. Come on, um, uh, Luis Garcia. Uh, you name him. You know whatever Luis Garcia you want, he's been good. <laughs> no, the Nationals, Luis Garcia. Um, we have uh, Orlando Garcia. Actually, hasn't been bad uh, for um, the Braves in in uh, in Albie's stead. Um, that's like Garcia, Arcia. Now we need a Sia. <laughs> Where is the Sia? Um, Come on, pretty mama. C or the CIA. Uh-oh. Wait, why is CIA in both of their <laughs> names? Hold on a second. Uh, well, welcome back to InfoWars. Uh, okay, and then uh, we mentioned like the, yeah, uh, no more Masara, Mazara, uh, Mazuza. <laughs> That's a throwback. Um yeah, I mean, he was hitting a little bit for San Diego, so, yeah, he's been okay. Um, Brandon Duvall is, like, I you know, like, the Cardinals just invent players, man. I, I don't get it. I, I, You know, like, 
all the we talk about all these top prospects, and then the Cardinals just promote some guy Brandon Donovan, and they're like, "Yeah, he's good." Like what? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, who is that? Um, yeah, so anyway, he has been good. Uh, Matt Verling, uh, Philly's outfielder, he's been decent. Uh, Dylan Moore had a good weekend for the Mariners. Uh, who else? Uh, Jan Mankata, I think he's probably uh, rostered in most places. Oh, J- Jack uh, Slowinski for the Pirates. He had three homers on Sunday. He's been hot for uh, – he's been good for homers um, and nothing else. Yeah, I mean, that's that's a bunch of names. Okay, so anyone you got there, uh, be done? Uh, I guess I'll just go on the pitching side. Um, Taiwan Walker has been pitching well. Miles Mikolas, um, you know, I, I guess uh, Jack Flaherty gave all his talent to Miles Mikolas, and now Miles Mikolas is good. Uh, Mitch Keller, since kind of wor- reworking the sinker, seems to have figured something out. Ross Stripling is back to being in in the starters role, and he's he's doing okay. He's kind of Ross Stripling in it out. Good at, good at your eye, but the strikeouts are always going to be kind of whatever. Um, Jeff Springs and Bo Brisk are a couple in deeper leagues to maybe keep your eye out on. Um, je- you know, again, two guys that have been moving back between kind of relieving and starting, but uh, both putting up pretty solid numbers. So if you're just looking for arms to throw, there you could do a lot worse than those two guys. Anything uh, else, Greg? Yeah, yeah. I actually, th- this week uh, for a streamer in a 15 team mixed league, I picked up Dylan Bunday. Uh, B- Bunday. Dylan Bundy. Bunday. Bunday. <laughs> Let's go. Hey, Bunday I'm, like Sunday. I'm down in the down under, and I got the Dylan Bunday. Uh, hey, you want to go down to Bunday Beach? Uh, it's down by Sydney. Um, anyway, I, I picked up Dylan Bundy. So anyone who's listening to this, please avoid him because he's going to be awful. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's all I got. Yeah. Um, we went from somewhere from Australian to British in that <laughs> accent somewhere. I'm not sure where, where that happened, but that definitely happened. But, uh, yes, I, I, you know, Dylan Bundy coming off a good start at Arizona, I mean, Arizona seems to be the place to go to get your good starts these days. Also to Wrigley when the wind's blowing in. Um, but, yeah, I mean, he's he, he gets he's a little uh, bit worse. Gets, I believe he gets the Rockies at home. Yeah. And home is down under. What's going on? <laughs> All right. So thanks for listening, everybody. As uh, we mentioned last week, we're on YouTube now, the whole show. So if you'd rather watch us be ridiculous rather than just listen, you can go out there. Um, Gray's not going to stop letting me tell you to go subscribe until we, we, until we reach a thousand subscribers. So just go do that. Uh, as always, if you have specific questions, go to the comments underneath this post, or you can find us on Twitter at Raz Bidon and at Razball for Gray. Or we're also on uh, Instagram, TikTok at Razball Fantasy. I can't promise we'll get to uh, comments out there, but we'll at least we'll at least try and check out there uh, as we post clips there now as well. Thanks for listening, and we'll talk to you next week. See you, Greg. Lates.